to identify Quercus betraya, it's good to look for the following features. A fissured grey to brown bark breaking into thick plates. The male catkins emerging in April to May, yellowy, borne on a long, thin thread in clusters hanging down from the spray, noticeably bundled along that thread. The female flowers, rather small, not re regularly noticed amongst the foliage in April to May, but they're formed in the leaf axles on a very short or no stalk, a green bud-like structure or set of bud-like structures with small red split stigma emerging from them. The resulting fruit, the acorns, are on short to no stalks held close to the twig as opposed to Quercus roba. The leaves born alternately on the twig with a cluster of leaves at the tip end. Notice the long stalks on the leaves, the long petioles on the leaves, which is again distinctive of Quercus petraea as opposed to Quercus roba. The leaves themselves, as I say, note that they actually have a significant petiole and that they are lobed. They're known as pinnately lobed because their lobes approximately lie op opposite each other and they're relatively regular in Quercus petraea. In Quercus roba, they're relatively irregular in shape. Uh, mid green above, light green below. Form of the tree relatively broad when open grown, and generally a darker green than Quercus roba, particularly later on in the season, where Quercus roba tends to suffer from particular pests and diseases that cause them to get yellow leaves. The winter buds alternate on the twig, with a cluster of them at the twig end, brown with many noticeable bud scales. Quercus petraea, the buds are often larger more obvious scales than on Quercus roba, but not always, only on vigorous growth I would say.